So it's FPL underscore esports on Twitch. If you want to watch the rest of this tournament, just head over to their channel. Give them a follow. They do awesome events for uh, Saudi Arabia, the Middle East, and just all of Asia. It's APL, Asian Pro League for Rocket League. So definitely check them out. Give them some love. Sandrock Gaming have proven over the past year that they are world class. Um, and now we've got Falcons Esports who got to this grand final by uh, sweeping their way through the lower bracket. But yeah, these are must-watch games. And if you haven't seen them, you're definitely not going to want to tune out in the next uh, 45 minutes because, yeah, they're just world-class games and we're gonna watch one game from a different player's perspective we're on trk's pov for this one uh we'll switch it for game two to one of the other players yeah i think it's awesome to see i will continue to support and to uh praise the middle east region for what they've already accomplished and what i think they can accomplish above over and above this for as long as it takes for them to be in rlcs i'm a big um Big fan of the region. I think that they're probably the third best region in the world. I'll be honest with you guys. I think that Middle East is a better, more competitive region than both South America and OCE. That's just my opinion, but I, I'm uh, confident with that opinion because they're no longer just a one team region. SRG are uh, you know, the team who have dominated for a long, long time. But, uh, I mean, just take a look at what the, what, the, let's just, you know, just watch these games. You're, you're going to see for yourselves. You can all decide. See, okay, looking for an infield pass there. Nobody's on the end of it. But the challenges are never just one at a time from these guys. As uh, so we see TRK backing up Venom on that one. Um, but now don't, hey, don't, don't get it twisted. I'm not hating on Sam and OCE. I recently said... I just want to put this in perspective, by the way. I recently said on the analyst desk, on the pre-show rather, uh, for RLCS, that I think OCE's best team, Ground Zero Gaming, uh, well, they're the team who are rank one in the points overall. I've recently said that I think they would be a top six EU team if they were able to play the whole RLCS X season in Europe. I think that they would probably be on more points than teams like Dignitas, Solary, Guild, Every other team that's battling for that sixth place. Um, so I'm not. I'm not just saying the other regions are bad. I think they're good. I think OCE, if you gave them the kind of practice that all the EU RLCSX teams, but if you put them in EU RLCSX, I think they'd be top six. I think they would, and they'd probably be top six in North America as well. Um, but it would be, yeah, it would be pretty tough for both. They'd be battling for sixth place in both regions. For South America, I don't think that they would be top six because those teams are a little bit less consistent, but they wouldn't be far off. I think that the best teams in South America, it's pretty much, you know, tr uh, true, neut true neutral. And who's the other team? I've, oh, I've forgotten the name. It, they've changed their, it's Nova Savi or something. How do I say this? I don't even know how to pronounce the name. Um, but yeah, I, I think they would probably be eighth place. EU slash NA. Are they Furia now? Yeah, they've changed names too many times. I, I, I still, whenever I think of that team, that's the card uh, Tander Kyo team. I think of them as um, I think of them as 11s. So they're Furia now. Yeah, I reckon they'd probably be sitting around about eighth place EU or EU or NA. Uh, whereas I think Grind Zero, a bit more consistency. I know CE does have higher peak international results than Sam does. Um, I reckon they'd probably be sixth place. But yeah, uh, best teams from the Middle East. If you gave them, uh, you know, same ping as the top EU teams, and you gave them um, the whole RLCSX season so far of practice, I really, yeah, I think that we might have new contenders for like number two in Europe, number three in Europe. Like these guys are, are the real deal. Um, and not just SRG, but Falcons. Um, as well, and the yeah, ultimates and empty, maybe a little bit further down the list. But I, I reckon if SRG were given, if they just moved to Europe, or if they had the same ping as uh, Europe, competing in RLCSX and EU, I reckon they'd probably be like third. <laughs> I, 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 I think they'd probably take third. I, I can only see BDS and Vitality being more consistently good than them. Um, but they, you know, they would have, they would have needed to be here since the start of the season. They couldn't just hop in right now and be third, best because all the RLCSX teams have really improved throughout the season um, and Middle East have not had as much comp competitive practice. But yeah, the mechanics are there. Um, the motivation is definitely there. 
and the confidence is absolutely there. If there's one thing that the Saudi Arabian teams, the Middle East teams, don't lack, it's confidence. These guys are ridiculous. Um, but yeah, we do have a 1-0 lead in this first game. Sorry, a little bit of a tangent for the entire game here, but I think it's an important tangent, so I wanted to talk about it. Oh, that was a good shot, or a good chance. Love the pass and field from TRK there. Uh, but the only goal did come from offensive pressure from SRG. Bump on one shot from um, another. That's something you always have to watch out for, for S with SRG, is the timing of their bumps is spectacular. And their shots are pretty much always top corner or very near top corner. Um, would I be interested in looking at the Japanese national? I did actually get a chance to tune in to a little bit of the Japanese uh, nationals. Um, and I, you know, I think that those teams are probably able, they would be able to compete in like SAM or OCE, but I don't think they'd be able to compete in Europe or, or America. I don't think that, you know, maybe I think uh, Realize's team would probably be competitive in OCE or SAM, but I don't think they'd be competitive in EU or NA. I'm a good friend with uh, Realize. And I, I think he's awesome. Um, who do you guys want to watch for this second game, by the way? We'll go a different player for this one. Yeah, uh, well, we're just getting this game started, this game two. Already extremely consistent, fast pace being set by both teams, and both teams look comfortable in it. But SRG are winning 1-0 here. I suppose I could put up an overlay. Hold on, let me just get that set up, because I probably should. Um, as Falcons take a 1-0 lead at the very start of this one. But I've spoken about this many times in the past. I think the main reason why Middle East is the most competitive uh, in terms of ranked gameplay and also the most competitive um, in actual, you know, threes tournaments, or at least in the terms of appearance. They obviously haven't been able to compete in RLCSX or LAN events before, international LANs. But just by watching the players, I mean, you guys, I've watched enough Rocket League to know what good Rocket League looks like and to know what, you know, uh, good players look like when they're playing Rocket League uh, in uh, Pro 3s. I think it's fairly obvious to me that uh, the Middle East teams are just better uh, at the moment than all the other regions outside of NA EU. And the reason is pretty simple. It's because they get to practice versus the best players in Europe in ranked every single day. Every day they're grinding ranked against the best in Europe. Um, and yes, they have a ping disadvantage, but they uh, it's it's playable. And it's kind of like training weights. These guys just learn how to play with, low, with higher ping, and now they... Um, they're insane when they play on uh, lower ping, so... Same same reason, I think, as to why South America had a bigger and more impressive first LAN performance than OCE did. It's a great pass. Senso should have uh, probably had a better shot on that. I think his angle is coming in a bit tight. It's a little bit more leaning towards the back post, he would have had this. It's a very good infield. Yeah, South America coming into RLCS uh, for their debut season had more mechanical ability and they had more um, impressive performances than OCE did in their debut RLCS season. And the reason for that is because South American players get to play against North Americans on the US East ladder. However, it's a bit more of an unplayable connection. A lot of the SAM guys get 140 ping, which is a lot, a lot harder to play with than 80 or 100. It's a big difference. Like, up to 80 slash 100 is pretty much the limit of playability, in my opinion, for absolute top tier play. Um, as evidenced by US West players being able to play uh, very well against US East players with a similar kind of ping range. Still a disadvantage, but it's playable. When you get into the, you know, 120s, 140s, okay, now it's getting a bit harder. So, and even 150s for some Sam players. So they don't have the same... Uh, fortune as Middle East players of being able to play in, you know, a winnable ping connection against these players. The Senzo needing rescue there by Khaled. He didn't want to drop the ball down into the box, but that's what's happened. At any time that there's an, uh, any inkling of a, a shot coming in, a long shot, or just a passing play coming in, you can see that Senzo and Ahmad in particular are always trying to turn and go for bumps and demos. And recoveries as well. They're always bumping and demoing on recoveries. We don't really see that as much from Khaled. 
because he is a very much a priority uh, defender in this team. He likes to rotate out whenever he can. As <laughs> Wow, Ahmad just walks it in. That was a really uh, interesting solo goal there from him. Yeah, very high level stuff by both teams. Extremely consistent. I think that's, uh, that goal from uh, Ahmad was probably a little bit lackluster on the defensive side. Crazy aggression coming in from Senzo here. <laughs> he really just wants to hunt Falcons down. That was not the best clear by Ahmad, but Faisal's shots hit the post. Huge chance there for Falcons. Khaled collecting a pass from Ahmad, but unable to get it on target. Senzo has tried a few times to... I think he's trying to just get a flip reset and pinch the ball at the same time. I think the freestylers call that pancaking the ball. Uh, am, I, am I right about that? I think free. I think that's what freestylers call it. When you just kind of squash the ball on a wall with uh, the underside of your car. Um, they do. Wow, look at me. So, might be a boomer, but still got that right. Accidental flip there from Khaled, I believe, because he's just uh, taking himself out of the game briefly. I, I feel like people are trolling me whenever they come in and they're like, wow, your Ar Arabic names pronunciation is so good. I feel like I'm being trolled. Oh, and again, the post is the destination for one of these infield passes. So infield is something that SRG have looked for more as a route to the goal, whereas uh, more of a roundabout route from Falcons is their preferred strategy. Senzo's bumped. It's in with a second to go. And that was... Just a nightmare scenario for Senzo. This is one of the maps where you can see through the post from both directions, so he was visible. Um, Falcons knew where he was to come in for the bump right here. Let's take a look at um, Venom's POV. So, yeah, you can actually see Senzo there <laughs> through the post. It's a bit unlucky for Senzo. Might, it might have been harder to hit. I mean, if this is a map like, uh, I don't know, Wasteland or something or Neo Tokyo, then maybe he would have been harder to hit here, but you can see that Venom just knows exactly where he is because he sees the nameplate slowing down. He's like, oh yeah, Senzo just turned around in that near post area because <laughs> I saw the nameplate slowing down through the wall. And that's how he knew uh, where Senzo was. So Senzo comes out and yeah, Venom just tightened the bump perfectly. Um, Senzo jumped a bit earlier there, uh, early there with the pre-flip. We have to go back as well and look at the um, Ahmad goal. This is this is probably worth a watch. So let's see how did he do this because we were on Senzo's POV for this. So no boost. Oh, so Venom actually just assumed that uh, he had boost, I believe. Oh, TRK panic flipped as well. Oh, I didn't see that. So TRK is actually just panic flipped. I was wondering how, uh, how you made it through here. Yeah, that's just a that's just a, a, a mistake simply from TRK. Because if he uh, doesn't panic panic flip here, then Venom will have him covered. Whatever happens, he'll 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 at least know uh, what's happening, and you won't have to worry about. You can't really blame Venom for that. This is a rough position for him to be in. Uh, let me let me just load up the next game. I just wanted to take a closer look at that because Senza was on the other side of the pitch when it happened. All right, I'll say it one more time because uh, I know some people are probably just tuning in and they, they are going to be asking. But yeah, t uh, I did give TRK and his team uh, a year ban from my tournaments that I'm running on my channel, but I'm not running any more tournaments until like that year is going to be done. So um, no longer relevant. Who do you guys want to watch for this game? We've done Senzo, we've done TRK. This is game number three. We've got Ahmad, Khaled, Venom, Faisal. Take your pick to a chat. Everybody wants Ahmad. Yeah, this series is just too good. It has to be watched. I'll echo again what I said earlier. I previously, when I casted the Ultimates vs. SRG from this tournament's group stage, I said I wasn't going to do this replays cast for the Grand Final because I didn't want to discourage anybody from tuning in to the Grand Final's broadcast or from to the APL uh, Esports broadcast. But now it's happened, so I can reveal to you that I, yeah, I was definitely thinking about doing this from then. I just didn't want to say that and discourage people from watching live. But yeah, it's happened now, so I'm not uh, torn like this anymore. Ahmad on the respawn, quickly looking to get involved again. Very nice pinch forward. Nobody expected him to play this 
lane of attack. And now infield to Senzo. Huge dunk from TRK, though. And on the run, straight down the middle for the opening goal. That is a massive, massive save. Completely surprised the entire Sandro Gaming lineup. It looked like it was uh, Kyle at third man there. Senzo was moving in for the uh, infield. Actually, it wasn't an infield pass. It was just a backward pass from uh, Ahmad. But yeah, Kyle did not realize DRK was going to slam that save. Well clear. Okay, so it looks like there's a couple of things that Ahmad was thinking about there. He's looked like for a second he was trying to lean back into that ball and get it high up into the air uh, with the underside of his car and play for a reset rebound, but didn't have a lot of boost and didn't uh, lean back far enough for that to happen. Oh, that's just gone in. Space L creeps forward. And now Ahmad's speed will allow him to score. GH Salt, thanks for the 13 month tier one. Welcome back to the channel, man. Also, Hunters, thanks for the six month tier one. Plum Tree, 53 month tier one. Welcome back, everybody. Why were they banned from my events for a year? They uh, had an account share uh, in a tournament that I was streaming, Fusion. So, actually, all three goals here. I don't know if you guys noticed, Senzo there, moving up his third man. All three goals in this game so far have come from third man not positioning correctly. So we had uh, Khaled, then I think we had uh, Faisal, and then Senzo there. Or was it Venom on, I, I forget if it was Venom or Faisal on um, Falcons Esports. Yeah, they're very eager to play aggressively off 50-50s, and you can do that if you're the second man in a, in a three-star uh, team. If you've got backup, you can absolutely, um, you know, move in aggressively and try and read a 50-50 get there first but if you're last man it's extremely risky to do that so you, we've seen a couple times three times this game that mistake has been made but yeah uh, Middle East does have a lot of young up and coming talent as well they've got uh, the twins uh, the 13 year old twins Kaliers and Rawas and or is it Rawad? I forget. I forgot which one Twitch chat was telling me it is. Twitch chat told me one pronunciation, and Khalid told me another. And I know Khalid's is definitely going to be the right one. Oh, extremely close there, Ahmad. Never afraid to slam the backboard with a setup for a double touch. And his defensive 50/50s have been solid this game. All these players do such a good job. Uh, pressuring the ball and recoveries. It's really high level stuff on that in that regard. But the, I think the, the two biggest weaknesses that I've identified just from watching this, uh, these replays today and from watching the tournament when it was live, uh, the biggest weaknesses for me are definitely, you know, third man positioning. Too aggressive at times. Leaves openings that are exploitable. And secondly, I would say clears are, are sometimes susceptible to being intercepted and sent hard on target. Oh, say different minds there. Ahmad wanted the pass and uh, Khaled wanted to run ahead in demo. Hey, Realize. How you doing, man? Congrats on the win in uh, APL Japan. Oh, it's awesome to see that you guys are still killing it over there. Realizing Emmy definitely should have RLCS is a long shot from Khaled. Goes in. <laughs> no third man again. I feel like the theme for this third game has been no third man at home, which you know some people might be thinking. It's it's hilarious to me that the you know the naysayers of the Middle East region are always just they're hiding under a rock, and then as soon as there's one messy game, as soon as there's one game where somebody own goals or somebody whiffs or somebody has a really bad defensive position, they're like, there we go. That's why these guys would get crushed in RLCS. Yeah, there you go. That that would be punished every single day in RLCS. I'm like, oh, this is so with this kind of logic, that's like uh, insane to me. <laughs> you can just look at one isolated incident and be like, yeah, oh, yep, yep, that's yep, that's how they would lose. Right there. Oh, delicious finish. Ahmad makes it 3-2. In off the very top corner giant. Hater's going to hate. Yeah, yeah, of course, Hater's going to hate. But, I mean, the, the, reason, the reasoning that people come up with for thinking that uh, Middle East wouldn't be a competitive region in RLCS just baffle me. It absolutely baffles me because I, I never see the same fair arguments being made for already RLCS regions like NAEU, G2 for example. Um, we're so famous for never having a, a third man in position. Never. They, they would just 
concede long shots every tournament, every every day. And it would happen, and they would still be, you know, getting talked about by casters, including myself and uh, all the fans and all of the armchair analysts saying, yeah, G2 are great. You know, they you know they play a very aggressive third man. It gets them scored on sometimes. But that's just their play style. Well, it's no big deal. And then you see the same thing coming out of Middle East, and people are like, yep. See, these guys just, they're not on, they're not on the same level. <laughs> you know? It's like, uh, I'm just thinking to myself, oh, that's really not that, that's not it. That's just not the take. It just isn't what's happening here. Like, that's not how Rocket League is decided at the pro level. Rocket League at the pro level is like 99% mechanics and 1% which team's positioning better. It's 99% mechanics. You guys realize this? I mean, I bet you even some pros would disagree with this. And I know coaches in Rocket League, like, uh, analysts will definitely disagree with this. They'll be like, no, it's all strategy. <laughs> it's not. Rocket League's 99, 99, higher than 99% mechanical ability at the pro level. Um, and then it's 1% strats. Because if you can just hit the ball hard and uh, be faster than the other team, you've got a great shot of winning against anybody. Um, so, okay, we're 2-1 on SRG here. Let's get the next game started. But are we going to watch? There's uh, Khaled. Venom or Face Sal? Who do you guys want to watch next? It's fifty percent mechanics. Okay, buddy. <laughs> face Sal. Okay, let's watch Face Sal for this one. Everybody's saying Face Sal. I mean, something I like to do myself when I'm casting sometimes is I just hop on a first-person POV of a player to see if they're like how good they are. Um, just to see, okay, is this guy legit? Does he have what it takes to be relevant? For more than a you know a couple of months more, because you know players who are already kind of struggling with the pace of Rocket League and they're already struggling mechanically to keep up and they don't really have any trajectory of improvement in that regard. Don't, in my opinion, oh that's a huge hit <laughs> from Khaled. There is a third man back for that one. Um, but yeah, the players who aren't really there mechanically are the ones who are going to struggle for the longest time. It's easy to fix positioning. It's easy to learn how to. Rotate, as people like to say. Most overrated terminal of Rocket League, rotation. I think this season, I think RLCS Season X is the season where people have finally realized, oh, oh my goodness, wait. Oh wait, it might actually be mechanics <laughs> that teams need. That might actually be what teams have been missing this whole time, because this season, more than any other season before it, has had lots of new teams coming in. Great backboard pressure there from... Falcons, that was really well done. Yeah, we've had so many players being forced uh, down the, the power rankings, down the ladder of you know RLCS competition this season because it's a more brutal format and it's a more honest format. The good teams have risen to the top and the teams who actually weren't as good have uh, struggled. And we've had a lot of players retire. Um, so. I'm personally not surprised because I knew that all this chat about, oh yeah, the, you know, this experience and rotations and positioning, super important. Nah, it's just all these teams are going to get replaced by mechanical wonder kids. <laughs> They're all going to get replaced by mechanical uh, players, I'm telling you. And that's why Middle East is going to kill the game. When they go to RLCS, when, when they get in, oh man, they're going to annihilate. Yeah, what I mean by mechanics, the main mechanics I'm talking about, because I know people are going to ask, is um, recoveries, top mechanic, fluidity of movement, you know, how fast are players able to move around the field while maintaining momentum. And fluidity of movement is has a lot of subcategories, you know, pre-flips have really elevated uh, the movement that people have been capable of. Oh my goodness, well <laughs> I don't know how that didn't go in, but... Basel almost played a part of that if he didn't. And now it's SRG starting to batter the backboard. They are absolutely testing the limits of uh, their opponents. Control by Faisal. It's good composure to bring the ball down there. Um, how soon till Dignitas dominates like BDS right now? Um, I, I don't know if Dignitas will ever dominate. I don't think any team will ever dominate like BDS are currently dominating, to be honest. I don't think any team's going to do that ever again. It's what BDS have achieved this year is... It's its actually unbelievable. I mean, I've seen it happen. It's still happening. I can still I still can't believe it. Like, they, they've dominated so so much, more than any other team has in this, in this kind of time span. 
Even Dignitas are, I think, still the best team to ever play. The, you know, Panda, KDOT, Turbo team. They're still the best team of all time in threes. They never had such consistent domination as uh, this current BDS team. Nice reset shot there from CRK. You can't give any of these guys space. This was scary about uh, watching SRG versus Falcons. Literally any player in this lobby will score a flip reset on you if you give them space. They will score a double touch on you if you give them space. They will score an air dribble on you if you give them space. They can all do all of the tricks. They, they don't have anything in their game that they're lacking in that regard. And yeah, they're all super fast. They're all very good at challenging the ball. And uh, they're all extremely good at shooting. <laughs> That's another top shelf laser from Khaled, I believe. Corey, thanks for 21, 21 month tier one. Welcome back to the channel, man. Really appreciate that. Uh, TRK was never suspended from Psionic tournaments. He was just, uh, uh, him and his team were uh, banned from a tournament I did. And they weren't allowed to participate in my tournaments for the, uh, the year after because of an account sharing uh, situation. Yeah, that year is coming to an end now, so hopefully uh, they'll get more chances to compete and won't make any mistakes. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, basically, I mean, you, you already know, everybody knows at this point, I'm repeating myself for the benefit of those who are just tuning in at the very uh, last minute here. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of watching Middle East Rocket League. Super fun region. Super mechanical. You're, you're likely to see highlights in every single game. So yeah, it's like, to me, it's the same as watching top tier NAEU Rocket League. Like, this, it's the same as enjoyment for me as watching um, you know an NRG versus Rogue or a BDS versus Giants or something you get the same kind of feel because you get the you get the highlight plays you get the you get, you get the mechanics you get the drama um, any tournaments in the pipeline yeah I've got a few ideas I don't no, nothing announced yet but I do have a few ideas how do you detect account sharing? Well, Psionics are capable of detecting, uh, you know, account sharing, basically. So we were working with Psionics and they just confirmed it. Um, See, so yeah, I wouldn't advise it. Any pros, up and coming pros, if if you want to, you know, end your pro career before it even begins, then try account sharing in a tournament or something similar, because that's the fastest way to you know, end your career and not have to worry about being a pro rock league player anymore. It's very, it's super easy. It's like push of a button easy. As in, you know, I'm talking Psionics push one button and they know everybody who I can't share. Oh, that's a good finish actually. Very good finish. Let's see this from, I think it was uh, Ahmad who scored this. Oh, clean. Very, very difficult to very difficult to do this actually, to recover this easily. I feel like my car would have just spun off to the side here. Yeah, we, you guys want to see the, the TRK goal as well. I think it was the second goal, wasn't it? Um, it was the second goal for... Here it is. Oh, have I gone too far? I think I went way too far. Here it is. This is the TRK goal from this game. Did he get two resets on this? Or did he just not have it from the first one? I mean, I feel like that might have been a reset, but he's like, maybe not. I'll get another one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think he got two resets. <laughs> I think he got two resets, just in case. Um, so this is the this is the Khaled goal. Just an absolute cruncher of a shot, like he usually does. SRG definitely infield pass a lot more and a lot more effectively than any other team in the Middle East right now. They're very, very good at it. Their timing on their infield passes is excellent, and their timing on their follow-up on infield passes is absolutely excellent as well. Uh, let's get into game uh, number five. So this is 3-1 to SRG, but it's best of seven, so we continue. Gonna be doing a, oh sorry, forgot to ask, who do you guys wanna watch this one? We've got Venom or Khaled. Alright, we'll do Venom. Let's get into it. 
Ultimus Falcons SRG. Deserve our LCS. Got to give Empty a shout as well. They're also a very good team. There's see, This is the thing, right, about the Middle East region. Oh, sorry, I'm not on player POV at all. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I've totally been this. Um, Venom. Player, there we go. Sorry about that. But yeah, here's the thing about the Middle East region. Some people are probably thinking, yeah, SRG are good, but, you know, that team's not going to last. No team lasts forever in Rocket League. And then after they're gone, the region's going to be back to being rubbish again. But I don't think that that would happen at all. I think this region would remain competitive, and it's for the reason I mentioned earlier. These guys compete and they practice against EU's best players all the time. And EU still, I think, is probably the most competitive ladder in ranked. Um, e EU players in ranked, uh, from what I can see at least, sweat just a little bit more. NA's always been a bit more flamboyant in ranked and a bit more, um, you know, prioritizing fun over winning. But in, in Europe, nobody has fun. And I feel like this is just, you know, not even, I'm not even just talking about Rocket League anymore. Just like talking about in general, I mean, type one in chat if you've ever been to Eastern Europe, for example. If you go to Eastern Europe, nobody smiles over there. You know, nobody smiles east of the Alps. They're, they don't have smiles. Um, and in the UK, where I'm from, same thing. Like, I don't think I've heard anyone. Um, pass up on an opportunity to be cynical about something. Like, we are just... We don't like having fun even in the UK. Everybody in the UK loves to brag about how bad their day is going. You know, it's just like... It's a different kind of culture to America where everybody's positive, good vibes, um, and trying to, you know, be on that kind of wavelength. It's a very, it's a very different culture. Uh, so, a lot more toxic in Europe. In ranked, uh, from what I can see, at least I've played, you know, a lot of Europe ranked. I've played a lot of NA ranked as well. Europe ranked is way more toxic. Europe ranked is way more sweaty. Um, so, yeah, Middle East get to practice against the most toxic, the most sweaty, and uh, probably the most mechanical ranked playlist, which is the EU playlist. It's only marginal, though. US East playlist is also very, uh, very, very good. It's just not as much of a focus on winning as uh, having fun. Yeah, Venom having a bit of one. He's having one of those games here. I don't know if uh, this is just me, but I feel like he's been boost starved this entire game. He just can't catch a break. <laughs> he can't find a boost anywhere. Jack said that TRK reminds him of First Killer. Do, you, do I agree? Um, not really. I mean, I don't know if Jack's talking about 1v1. But TRK, I, I don't know if he reminds me of First Killer that much, to be honest. This is a great goal from TRK, actually. So we don't get to see that right now. I'll go back and watch it later. Um, but yeah, that, that's a pretty sick recovery by TRK to dish that one in. Yeah, Venom's really had no boost this whole game. Well, that's some, not the best position there by Venom. Got too far forward in the goal, so he couldn't attack that ball. You'll notice that he was a bit stuck. And again, actually, this is very awkward positioning in goal by Venom. I feel like that's something, he, you know, if this is normal for him. Something that could definitely be worked on. Neither of those uh, centers were center balls that he was able to contest proactively. He was kind of just, like, waiting to see what would happen. Then he can make his move. Um, great read on that play in attack, though. Yeah, remind me guys to go back and watch the replays of goals we were far away from so we can get a better look at them. I, I, I've not uh, seen a lot of Venom play. Venom and uh, Faisal. Actually, I've seen a little bit of Faisal play. I did cast some Faisal games before, but Venom, I think this is the first time I saw him play uh, this tournament. That's a good bump, though. Very good bump. And that's opened the door for Faisal. So Venom made it very easy for Faisal to set up a score there. Set up a goal, uh, sorry. Timo, thanks for the brand new Prime. Welcome to the channel. Much appreciated, man. And also, Quarry, thanks for 21 month tier one. Welcome back to you. 
That's a pretty good timing on that challenge from Venom. You'll notice he didn't go in immediately. He was waiting to see if Khaled was going to just boom the ball, because it is Khaled, so he might just smash that ball as hard as possible, in which case there's no point challenging. Oh, wow. just like Ahmad, he's done it again. He's done this a couple times today. He just like air dribbles the ball straight down the middle and everybody expects him to have a reset and he just goes straight through them. Good little back right kick off there by Falcons. I've casted face out. Yeah, I have. I have casted face out. Casted uh, face out on the Khaled 2s, I believe. Venom used to be Xbox player. I, th I see. I see. But yeah, I was saying earlier, I don't think the Middle East region is just SRG. It's lots of good teams. Ooh. No chance of a comeback here because that is zero seconds, but a one goal game. Let's go back to uh, this second goal of the game though. This is a very good play by TRK. Just, I don't know if he planned this, but it's great. I mean, it's on, if, he, if he planned this, if he planned to pinch the ball into the curve above the goal and then do this, then it's actually 300 IQ, but I don't think he planned this. I think he was probably just trying to center it or like hit it forward. And then he realized, oh, it's bounced down, I can score. But I mean, I'm not trying to take anything away from it. All I'm saying is that if he planned this, then it's like, not only is it mechanically insane, it's also otherworldly. Like, how do you come up with this stuff? Um, but I reckon he'd probably just realize, oh, I've pinched it into the backboard. That's going down. Let me just get there. Because apparently in the Middle East, Every car is actually a cat. Car like players don't know how to land on anything that isn't their wheels with full momentum. So uh, yeah, everybody's just absolutely popping off over there. Let's get into game six though. It's been for me. I'm just kind of doing a chilled out cast on this because I've already uh, seen this uh, match and I've. Uh, Told you guys where you can go watch it if you want to see a full cast of it. APL underscore esports on Twitch. But I've really enjoyed watching this back. Um, it's a super entertaining thing to do. To just tune into these Middle East tournaments and just see more incredibly mechanical uh, teams. But we're on the board with Khaled for this game. It's the only player we haven't been on first person POV so far. So you guys might have heard of this guy. He's pretty good at ranked. Uh, but he's pretty good at tournaments as well. So far in this series, we've seen SRG infield pass to a level way above Falcons. Um, but Falcons, their advantage is, well, their, their thing that they've done really well is just putting the ball in awkward positions near SRG's goal. Because uh, SRG, I think, are way better in attack than they are in defense makes sense because for the longest time they never actually defended in uh, Middle East tournaments. They just attacked all the time. Nobody could get the ball out of, out of defense. So these guys have had a lot of practice in the offense, not so much in defense. And it does show nowadays where, you know, teams like Falcons are starting to play more of an even midfield matchup with SRG that some of those weaknesses do get exploited sometimes. And SRG, when the ball does, uh, you know, get kept above their backboard for a long time, Maybe a bad uh, clear comes in, which Falcons are able to pounce on. Maybe the backboard just gets uh, left undefended briefly. Funnily enough, right now. <laughs> but uh, I think SRG will probably improve at this as teams get better at attacking them and putting them on defense for long periods of time. I'm sure they're going to get better at uh, responding to that. Yeah, Falcons' defense has been pretty good for the most part in this series. They're, both teams actually have challenged exceptionally well. They've been following up challenges very well. There's never been a completely uncontested ball. The only solo plays that we have seen have been crazy, crazy impressive solo plays. Uh, but we do see SRG double commit there. Something else that can happen on occasion. Just, that's Falcon's game plan. Just get the ball into awkward positions in attack. That's a very good pass by Venom. And Faisal opting to hit it above Khaled. And that's 1-0. Brilliant snipe there by Faisal. You'll notice that he didn't uh, shoot that on target. He put it straight over Khaled's head. So that made it almost impossible for Khaled to get a clear onto it. Uh, here comes Senzo. That's going to bounce down and away from him. Ahmad cutting in front of uh, Khaled, but that's normal. Khaled, like I said, he's a priority defender for this team. And uh, whenever 
Ahmad or Senzo have a way into attack or a way into a play in offense, they will take it. And Khaled knows they're going to take it, so he can react accordingly. The back post interception coming in now from Khaled. He can't get past TRK's 50-50, though. But Senzo, first to the near post, puts in the equalizing goal. Is it just you or is Khaled's movement so satisfying? It's not just you, mate. It's definitely not just you. Um, but you're right, it is satisfying. Did he hesitate or could Khaled not reach that ball? It was uh, just a very well placed shot into the backboard over his head. I mean, that's really why you want to hit the ball to the backboard above your opponent, directly above them because it makes it hard for them to react properly while also keeping perfect vision of what's happening around them. Because if the ball's directly over your head and you have ball cam on so you can see where, where, the, where exactly the ball is, you can't see anything else, which uh, limits your ability to play the position correctly. You just kind of have to do it based on feel. Um, and even if you do get a touch on it, it's quite hard to clear it. Ahmad just goes straight at TRK and barrels him out of the way. It's been Senzo and Ahmad in this game who have been just relentlessly attacking. Uh, they have found another way through. Yeah, what do you guys think? I mean, this is now... We've seen five, almost six games of these teams. It's good communication there from Khaled and Senzo. Not to double commit on that, but look at the shooting. I mean, I said that SRG's infield passing was better. Check out that. I think this game has been the best infield passing game for... Falcons. Both their goals are from infield passes, so very, very good stuff by them. Uh, but yeah, I was going to ask you guys, what do you guys think? Um, and you can be honest, this is still something, it's a matter of opinion, not fact. So, what do you guys think? Pre uh, press 1 in chat if you would want to see these guys competing with uh, RLCSX teams. 2 if you don't. Um, for me, it's as many ones as I'm allowed to type before Nightbot times me out. I'll, I'm spam. If uh, you know, if I hear somebody ask that question, I'm spamming ones till I get banned by Nightbot. This is so obvious. Yeah, it's a it's a one from me. Uh, love watching these guys play. Um, massive shout out again to APL Esports and Newiz who broadcasted this tournament. APL also covered a bunch of other regions as well, a bunch of other uh, countries, national events. So definitely check them out. Asian Rocket League is on the rise and yeah I just can't get enough of uh, watching them play I feel like I'm more motivated to stream uh, you know ranked games show matches tournament matches like this from the Middle East region than any other region because you know what geographically I'm in I'm closer to them than the other regions OCE is a nightmare time zone for me um, and South America is right in line with US East so They've got a very natural collab um, going on there. Uh, but yeah, them not being in RLCS, them not being, you know, we don't get to see as much of the Middle East players play as the other regions. And for that reason, I will continue to give them as much of the spotlight as I can. Because yeah, they deserve it. They're great players, great teams. And to summarize, you know, what is it that makes this region and what is it that makes these players so exciting, these teams so exciting? It's the mechanics on display. It's the confidence on display. I mean, the, the confidence that these guys have when they go for plays is completely unfaltering. And um, the commitment, to, I don't know if you guys can, re and me even, I don't know if we can really appreciate and understand what it's like to be able to get this good at a game um, without ha you know having RLCSX to aim for. You know, when you've got RLCS, when you've got these big tournaments to aim for, uh, that a lot of the EU, NA, well, I mean, all of the EU, NA, OCE, SAM players have, there's a very clear goal there, you know? There's a very clear um, uh, objective to strive for. And the fact that the Middle East teams and the Middle East players have been able to get this good and to be this good without that, it only goes to show how good I think they could get if they were given. I think they would just open the floodgates. You know, we're already seeing so many world-class players from this region. Um, yeah, if Middle East are ever given RLCS, uh, they're gonna, there's going to be a whole lot more where that came from. So, uh, yeah, everybody's just absolutely popping off over there.
let's get into game six still. It's been, for me, I'm just kind of doing a chilled out cast on this because I've already uh, seen this uh, match and I've uh, told you guys where you can go watch it if you want to see a full cast of it, APL underscore esports on Twitch. But I've really enjoyed watching this back. Um, it's a super entertaining thing to do, to just tune into these Middle East tournaments and just see more incredibly mechanical uh, teams. But we're on the board with Khaled for this game. He's the only player we haven't been on first-person POV so far. So you guys might have heard of this guy. He's pretty good at ranked. Uh, but he's pretty good at tournaments as well. So far in this series, we've seen SRG infield pass to a level way above Falcons. Um, but Falcons, their advantage is, well, their, their thing that they've done really well is just putting the ball in awkward positions near SRG's goal. Because uh, SRG, I think, are way better in attack than they are in defense. Makes sense because for the longest time, they never actually defended in uh, Middle East tournaments. They just attacked all the time. Nobody could get the ball out of, out of defense. So these guys have had a lot of practice in the offense, not so much in defense. And it does show nowadays where, you know, teams like Falcons are starting to play more of an even midfield matchup with SRG. Uh, some of those weaknesses do get exploited sometimes. And SRG, when the ball does, uh, you know, get kept above their backboard for a long time, maybe a bad uh, clear comes in, which Falcons are able to pounce on. Maybe the backboard just gets uh, left undefended briefly. Funnily enough, right now. <laughs> but, uh... I think SRG will probably improve at this as teams get better at attacking them and putting them on defense for long periods of time. I'm sure they're going to get better at uh, responding to that. Yeah, Falcon's defense has been pretty good for the most part in this series. They're, both teams actually have challenged exceptionally well. They've been following up challenges very well. There's never been a completely uncontested ball. The only solo plays that we have seen have been crazy, crazy impressive solo plays. Uh, but we do see SRG double commit there. Something else that can happen on occasion. Just, that's Falcon's game plan. Just get the ball into awkward positions in attack. That's a very good pass by Venom. And Faisal opting to hit it above Khaled. And that's 1-0. Brilliant snipe there by Faisal. You'll notice that he didn't uh, shoot that on target. He put it straight over Khaled's head. Because that made it almost impossible for Khaled to get a clear onto it. Uh, here comes Senzo. That's going to bounce down and away from him. Ahmad cutting in front of uh, Khaled, but that's normal. Khaled, like I said, he's a priority defender for this team. And uh, whenever Ahmad or Senzo have a way into attack or a way into a play in offense, they will take it. And Khaled knows they're going to take it, so he can react accordingly. Back post interception coming in now from Khaled. He can't get past TRK's 50-50, though. But Senzo, first to the near post. Puts in the equalizing goal. Is it just yours? Khaled's movement so satisfying. It's not just you, mate. It's definitely not just you. Um, but you're right. It is satisfying. Did he hesitate or could Khaled not reach that ball? It was uh, just a very well-placed shot into the backboard over his head. I mean, that's really why you want to hit the ball to the backboard above your opponent, directly above them. Because it makes it hard for them to react properly while also keeping perfect vision of what's happening around them. Because if the ball's directly over your head and you have ball cam on so you can see where, where, the, where exactly the ball is, you can't see anything else, which uh, limits your ability to play the position correctly. You just kind of have to do it based on feel. Um, and even if you do get a touch on it, it's quite hard to clear it. Ahmad just goes straight at TRK and barrels him out of the way. There's been Senzo and Ahmad in this game who have been just relentlessly attacking and uh, they have found another way through yeah what do you guys think I mean this is now we've seen five almost six games of these teams it's good communication there from Khaled and Senzo not to double commit on that but look at the shooting I mean I said that SRG's infield passing was better check out that I think this game has been the best infield passing game for Falcons if both their goals are from infield passes so very very good stuff by them uh, but yeah I was going to ask you guys what do you guys think um, and you can be honest this is still something it's a matter of opinion not fact so what do you guys think Pre uh, press 1 in chat 
if you would want to see these guys competing with uh, RLCSX teams too if you don't. Um, for me it's as many ones as I'm allowed to type before Nightbot times me out. I'll, I'm spam. If uh, you know, if, if I hear somebody ask that question, I'm spamming ones till I get banned by Nightbot. This is so obvious. Yeah, it's a it's a one for me. Uh, love watching these guys play. Um, massive shout out again to APL Esports and Newiz, who broadcasted this tournament. APL also covered a bunch of other regions as well, a bunch of other uh, countries, national events. So definitely check them out. Asian Rocket League is on the rise and yeah I just can't get enough of uh, watching them play I feel like I'm more motivated to stream uh, you know ranked games show matches tournament matches like this from the Middle East region than any other region because you know what geographically I'm in I'm closer to them than the other regions OCE is a nightmare time zone for me um, and South America is right in line with US East so They've got a very natural collab um, going on there. Uh, but yeah, them not being in RLCS, them not being, you know, we don't get to see as much of the Middle East players play as the other regions. And for that reason, I will continue to give them as much of the spotlight as I can.